The shake event is a really easy one to understand and deal with. Uh, I wouldn't call it garish, but there's certainly not a lot of elegance to the shake event either. I'm sure you've already done this with your mobile device. Uh, you just shake it for some, like you're shaking up a can of soda or something before you're going to go spray it at somebody. Just, just shake, 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 and it does something in response. And uh, often it's like to reset, you know, game tiles or start the thing over or get a random selection of something. That's kind of a good use for shake event, things like that. It's not really subtle. Like, I wouldn't suggest trying to use it for, uh, you know, motion control of a character or anything. It's, it's just not that subtle, but it is pretty cool. So I've set up a little cube here. Uh, time to cube is now. And I thought, well, on a shake event, why don't we just shake the cube around? That's a decent example. Here we have what I set up as a shake manager. It's just a simple empty game object that you can create from right there. And I've put two nodes on it. Let's zoom in on that. The first node is just a listener. And I've added device shake event. And in your action browser, under device, right there, device shake event. Nice and easy. And it's got two things in it. Send event, you know what this is. When, whenever whatever this is happens, fire off an event. And that's what we do here, shake start, which leads to the next stage. But here, the shake threshold, um, it is a float. And it's really just what sensitivity of shake do I need? Uh, if you set something, you know, 0.2 as a value, it's going to have just a little bit of shake, which means it's going to be going off a lot more often. If you set it very high, uh, then it's going to be harder to get the thing to actually uh, trigger off the shake event. So you're going to want to tune this number a lot. And you might keep in mind that it could be different because like shaking, for instance, an iPad, takes more effort than shaking an iPhone, which is smaller. So you might even do a uh, device check, which we'll talk about later, and set a different shake value per device. Right here, I've got it set to two. And when that fires off the event, I just do an iTween shake position, easy as that. And I shake it by 0.2, because I don't need it to move too much, just enough to show what's going on. And I do it for two seconds. And when it's done, I call shake stop, and we flow right back into this so you can shake it again. Mm, you know, not the most amazing thing, but it's going to show you what shake does. And you can drop uh, the shake event in anywhere you want to listen to shaking. The thing to remember is this runs all the time, right? It doesn't have a checkbox for uh, whether or not you want to do it every frame because it, does, it, it works every frame by default. So you might want to have a separate shake uh, FSM manager somewhere, just always listening for a shake if it could go off at any moment. Or you can put it only in the places where you'd want shake to happen. You can make that decision yourself based upon game logic. But let's take a quick look at how this goes. Uh, goes to town shaking out things on our iPad. Here we got the cube running on the iPad. And, uh, you know, I can move it a little bit. This doesn't really qualify as a shake. Um, you can move it quite a bit, it doesn't qualify as a shake, but if you give it a real shake, then it fires off the iTween shake event that I've got on this cube, uh, which is pretty cool. And you can see I can, you know, I can wiggle it quite a lot there before it actually kicks in. I can get a little bit of action and then... So it's uh, it's really a sudden jarring that counts as a shake, like, see, that works. You know, it doesn't actually have to be a physical shake. Um, it can be all kinds of... <laughs> different things like that. So there you go. And you can tune the sensitivity, as you know, uh, for how, how much you want it to go before you uh, trigger the event. And that's it.